out everybody what is up Zaro here again and welcome to another live review um, this one we're going to be doing the uh, live review of the EA Play 2016 press conference and uh one thing I noticed is that a lot of these press conferences aren't as long as they were last year uh, I think I believe that EA had like the longest one. Uh, just going into it, I'm not really expecting too much. I know they're gonna talk about sports games and you know a little one or two changes that they didn't made. Maybe FIFA, Madden, NHL, um, anything else that they had made. Uh, I know they um, had made Mirror's Edge. I wonder if they're gonna do something with that. It'd be nice if they had something in virtual reality. Uh, something with virtual reality uh, in it, just to find out. Welcome to EA Play. EA Play. Live from the Novo in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. It's always cool to be part of something new. Turn this up a little this bit more. This is a brand new event, a brand new venue. And Andrew Wilson, the uh, Electronic Arts. Now we all know you have an insatiable appetite to dive deep into the games you love. Yeah, thank. But we could never give you everything you want in 60 minutes. And let's be honest, even if we could, you'd also probably rather see and hear it from the community anyway. Oh, shut Damn up. It. So consider this next hour to be a taste. A quick glimpse into a bunch of great stuff that we have in development. A lot of shit that we know you're not going to buy, but we're going to tell you about it anyway. <laughs> media and partners. We're inviting you in to play. We're surrounded here by hundreds of game stations. Thousands of you will get hands-on with our games this week. Nice. Unfortunately, more of you won't. But the content creators here are the ones who can tell you what they see, what they feel, what they like, and even what they don't. Nice. That's fine too. We want your feedback. We want to know what you think. Just as long as you take some time to play. Everybody not going to be able to. Of course, EA Play is a global experience. So here's a twist. Someone had this crazy idea of hosting EA Play in not one, but two locations. And then, I'm pretty sure it was that same person had an even crazier idea of seeing if we could join them live via satellite. So let's welcome Peter Moore and hundreds of our friends from London. Well, London? Okay. Nice. We're good, we're good. Hi, Andrew. As you can hear, we've got a great crowd here in London. We're at the iconic Hammersmith Apollo Theater. We've got 100 game stations back there. I've got 600 of my best friends. What a great looking group they are. We are going to have a blast tonight. Back to you. Thanks, nice. Peter. We'll be back with you in just a bit. Let's quickly set the stage for what you'll see over the next hour. We will take a look into the future of EA Star Wars games. Okay, Our nice. will take us further into the next intense chapter of the Mass Effect universe. Mass Effect, From nice. From sports, we have both competition and story. And of course, Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2 are both here today. Ooh. Right away after this show, we will actually host the first ever live stream 64-player Battlefield 1 match. Now, here's a question for you. Mm. Did any of you see the Battlefield trailer last month? No. I know you did, and I know a bunch of you were thinking... <laughs> I know you didn't, real. but... Are there actually got here for you today. ...airships and horses and trench knives and shovels? So two shovels. Things, one, yes, and two, you can see it for yourselves. Not in another trailer, but with an hour of gameplay live streamed around the world just an hour from now. A few thoughts before we get into the action. Just a decade ago, there were about 200 million game players in the world. We thought that was a lot. Now there are 2.6 billion and growing. We are all but, part of a global phenomenon. So like Flintstone kids. At its core is play, something that is increasingly important to our lives today. For many of us, games are vital. That's what drives us to make games and continue building, creating, innovating, and exploring. We know just how important it is. We see it as our responsibility to help people on all corners of the globe experience play. Because we all play to live. 
This will be a fantastic three days, so let's get started. First up is a great friend and the mastermind behind one of the industry's most compelling franchises, Vincent Pella. Vincent. Come, Vincent. Thank you, Andrew. Some of those tight balls. It's great to be back uh, near E3. Um, so. Titanfall introduced millions of players around the world to the fast, fluid, pilot and Titan gameplay that is at the heart of Titanfall. And eventually nobody the liked it. Of Titanfall 2, we're excited to welcome PS4 players to the franchise for the first time. Okay, nice. So they made it multi-platform this time. Uh, we'll start off with a look at what players can expect out of uh, Titanfall multiplayer. The same shit from the last one? <laughs> Let's do this. Stick Decided to put it on PS4, I guess, to try to... Increased sales because, from what I understand, it didn't really sell too well on Xbox One. Holy shit, a bunch of flying rockets! Oh. Mech suits, oh dang, shockwaves, boom, in your face. Damn, that, <laughs> that was a fucked up shot. <laughs> boom, man. Mm. Oh, disappeared. Next. Oh, that's dope. It got like a gravity beam. What the fuck was that? A, a force push? A lot of grappling hooks, a lot of fast-paced gameplay. You gotta. Damn. Yeah. Young. Get in my belly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure that's going to get boring after a while. I love it. So, it Titan looked impressive. Builds though. on the signature pilot and Titan gameplay to deliver a more robust experience, backed by the depth and variety our fans have been asking for. This includes six new Titans, each with their own unique combat abilities, nice. expanded pilot variety. gameplay, more customization options, and a deep progression system. And of course, Super smooth gameplay that we've always delivered. Um, prior to launch, we'll be holding a multiplayer technical test designed to help us stress key features of the game. To play the multiplayer test, go to Titanfall.com and sign up to get all the details. Nice. Now, for the four people that didn't see the leak this morning, <laughs> and if you know this, sing along with me. Um, I'm excited to confirm single player. Yay. So we'll be adding a full offline playable campaign to Titanfall 2. It'll be crafted to dive deeper into the Titanfall universe, exploring the unique bond between pilot and Titan, taking Ooh. full advantage of the movement and combat to deliver a feeling of being unstoppable together. And now here is the debut of the single player trailer for Titanfall 2 coming October 28th to PS4, nice. Xbox One, and PC. Thank you, everyone. October 28th. PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Good thing they always uh, tried to make these things multi-platform after they didn't sell well on the first launch, or the first game. BT-7274. Your data recorder says your original pilot was killed in action. Correct. My original pilot was KIA. I am now linked to Rifleman Jack Cooper. Who authorized this? Your mama. We had no other options. It seems like the Titans got her own, like got their mind, got a, like a mind of their own. What are your protocols? Protocol one, link to pilot. Protocol two, uphold the mission.
So I wonder if the Titan gets destroyed, like you can send him back to get repaired or something. But anyway, was that a sword? That was a damn sword. Nice. At least we get to play it this year. Oh, of course, NFL. Yeah, now this is the real reason why EA had the conference. See what two changes they made since the last one. <laughs> the sports games, they can't really do too much with them. You know, they, they, all they can do is update the roster, update the graphics, and try to improve the controls. You know. That's, that's pretty much all they can do with sports games. They can't really add nothing else. Update the roster, the controls, and the graphics. That's literally all they can do. Peter Moore. Bring that ass out. Chief competition officer. That is Madden NFL 17 for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And as always, oh, the okay. game looks incredible. I was about to say, what is it, London? Madden lets you take your team all the way with the most balanced gameplay to date, new ways to play in franchise mode, and an all new commentary team. It personifies everything. Exactly what is the commentary team is supposed to do? Passion. That's what I'm interested in. Intensity. And of course, competition. Competition in the world of gaming is esports. And it's absolutely electric. Elite players. Oh, they actually have competitions for that? And of course, big paydays. From the first Madden Challenge 14 years ago to today's competitive battlefield scene, and of course, the FIFA Interactive World Cup, EA is no stranger to the power of elite competition. But the spectacle of esports barely scratches the surface of competition. It's a select few that become pro gamers. That is why EA is embracing a new approach to competitive gaming. We want to make stars of all of our players. With new competitive modes and weekly online contests in our biggest franchises, we're making competition fun and meaningful for everyone, regardless of their ability. As such, I'm excited to announce three awesome new ways to compete. Challenger events, premier events, and EA major events. Okay. With our Challenger series of events, we'll be giving the community an ability to be more easily hosting and running their own tournaments. Nice. Next up is the premier That's going to be good. Man. That These could be something that could work for live games. events that we'll host with partners from inside and outside of the gaming world. And finally, there are EA major events. These are marquee live events run by EA on a global stage. The best players competing for the biggest prizes. And it all starts this weekend at EA Play in Los Angeles with our first EA major event, the Madden NFL 16 Championship. In a moment, NFL we'll 16. welcome ESPN Sam Burrell, uh, right there. in LA who will introduce you to the eight finalists. But first, let's okay. meet two of the fiercest Madden competition out there, Eric Problem Wright, and Zach, serious Mo Lane. The greatest of all time is the guy to beat. This guy just wins. Being the best in the world often inspires awe, reverence, respect. But when you're the best in the world at a video game, everyone thinks they can take you down. Every day on Twitter, there's people coming in saying that they can beat me. Usually, I just respond in, in, in the nature of something like, you know, Floyd Mayweather doesn't fight, you know, Joe Schmo off the street. I am the greatest of all time when it comes to Madden football. I'm here to win, and whoever's in the way is just, you know, another person that's going to have to get laid out. I'd like to believe that I'm the best Madden player in the world. Give it up for serious Mo! If anybody can be the heir to problems thrown, a lot of people feel it's going to be serious Mo. 
I kind of dedicated my life to this. You know what I mean? When I was 16, I was like at the top of my class, but I would like go to school with like no sleep from <laughs> being up all night playing Madden. Being a full-time video game player is hard for a lot of people to understand. It is tough. It is tough to do, and I'll play as many hours as I can just to really get ahead of the, the competition. Both Problem and Serious Mo have a claim to the top of the Madden world, and the issue may be settled at the Madden Championship. It's a tournament that started with a million players in online qualifiers and ends this week, live in Los Angeles, with $50,000 at stake. $50,000, okay. These would-be rivals are actually close friends, but don't expect them to take it easy on each other if they meet with a title on the line. Oh, there's no question I'm going to win the Madden Challenge this time around. I wish him the best of luck, but, you know, I got to beat him. Nice. So they got eight people on the stage of a finalist, I think. It started with a million players competing online, and now only these eight remain. The best Madden NFL players in the world. All world-class competitors. They're at the top of their game, but only one is going to be the winner. Uh, let's let's meet so one much for the guys here who appears to be a little injured. This is serious Mo. You saw in the piece what happened. Uh, I was racing with friends, didn't have my shoes tied, fell down, broke my collarbone. <laughs> didn't <laughs> have your shoes tied. He <laughs> got caught jacking off. Uh, Tell the real story. We don't want you to fall off the stage. Tell the real story, Mo. Right, uh, best of luck to you. Best of luck to all of you guys. Now it's going to be an awesome. I caught you on that corner. You can't be here. You know what the real story is. See it in person. You can tune in, you can watch on Twitch, YouTube, or tune in to ESPN3 to watch all the action live, or join us at ESPN2, 6 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday for the final. Now, let's send it back to Peter in London. Send it back to Peter Cottontail in London. Tell me how you really feel. Looking forward to some great action this week. But let's also take a moment to talk about the year ahead. I'm excited to announce the Madden NFL 17 Championship Series. Next year, everything gets bigger and better. How much better? We're putting up $1 million in total prize money. Nice. Now, it takes full-time dedication to be the best. And we want to reward our elite players for their skill and commitment. The Madden 17 Championship Series is a full year of high-stakes action that spans four EA majors and more events to be announced soon. But it's not just Madden. At EA, competition is at the heart of everything we'll do. And we'll have more news about more events and more games to share soon. So stay tuned. And here's to a great year of competition ahead. But now, let's go back to Los Angeles Here's the general manager of Bioware, my good friend, nice. Aaron Flynn. Bioware. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, at the heart of Mass Effect Andromeda is a question. How yeah. far will we go? In the game, you are part of an ambitious expedition. They didn't do too much for the last Mass Effect, did they? To help humanity find a new home. I'm just not realizing that. Like, that's the fact hasn't been talked about a lot. Andromeda Galaxy. Mm -hmm. You wake up. The last Andromeda didn't know. Um, Everything is new. Didn't do too much. Planets, new species, new technologies. You must be among the most courageous, the most daring to go on this journey. Because this is a galaxy where you are the alien. How far will we go? Well, that question is also at the heart of the development of Mass Effect Andromeda. The Mass Effect trilogy is a huge part of our history and the lives of many of our fans. It was an amazing story, but this is a whole new adventure. We're building on the things you love about Mass Effect, amazing stories and gameplay, and now we're letting our imaginations run wild. This is a bigger adventure filled with a whole new cast of memorable characters and more freedom than we've ever given players in a Bioware game. And for the first time, it's all powered by Frostbite, which means you're going to see, hear, and feel Mass Effect like never before. That's our promise to you. So how far will we go? Well, we can't wait to share more with you this fall. Here's a look behind the scenes at Mass Effect Andromeda. Thank you. Our survival as a species has always depended on our drive to seek out the undiscovered. Mm -hmm. 
and span the boundaries of our known world. With Mass Effect, we are going further than ever before. To Andromeda, to build a new home for humanity. Imagine distant star systems with remotely hostile planets. Teeming with alien life and civilization. Worlds where adventure, danger, and the unknown are waiting to be discovered. We've created a universe that you will lose yourself in. A whole right. new galaxy for you to explore. What do we got? Really? Did we make it? All right. How's everyone doing? Okay. I hope you're loving what you've seen so far. We've still got a bunch more ahead, including FIFA, Star Wars, FIFA, Star Wars. and of course, Battlefield 1. Okay, nice. But first, let's have a practical conversation about play. Many of these games we're talking about today are months away. Meanwhile, I'm sure you're all playing games that you've already invested a ton of time in. So our commitment to, is to support the community. It's a commitment to continue delivering new content to enjoy with your friends. In just the last year alone, we delivered more than 300 game updates to our most popular games. This year, that number will be even higher. And for EA Play this week, we have our biggest collection of content updates ever across both console, PC, and mobile. We've also got free trials to help you discover and try something new this week, like the Outer Rim expansion for Star Wars Battlefront. Nice. Or check out some new games through EA Access for Xbox <laughs> One. And origin access for Suddenly bomb, motherfucker. Both have more than 20 great games available in the vault, and they are free for everyone to try all week long. Nice. Now, here's one more way we hope you'll play this week. We have a new program called Play to Give. It's a big deal for us, and it's unlike play, anything we've ever done before. Give. We're bringing together in game challenges with charitable donations. First, the charities. At EA, we celebrate charitable causes that encourage a more diverse and inclusive world for all of us, as well as those that inspire and assist future game makers through STEM education. So we've partnered with five great organizations for EA Play. The UN He For She Initiative, National Center for Women and Information Technology, okay. Special Effects, Code.org, and Code2040. Now the challenges. There are five of them that are designed to celebrate our player community this week. Some examples. In Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline, there's a new objective that's based on helping out your teammates in need. We're celebrating strong female characters in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes as you deploy a special squad to battle against the droids. And in FIFA Ultimate Team, if you can win with the Play to Give Cup, you receive an untradeable rare Mega Pack. Nice. It all comes together at the end of EA Play when we donate $1 million in celebration of the importance of play. Oh, that's cool. Ain't nobody clap, but uh, on FIFA 17. literally nobody clapped for that. That was kind of like fucked up. Literally nobody clapped for that shit. I was like, wow. Let me check. How's everyone doing? We don't care. We don't care. I think we're winning. Thanks, Andrew, and welcome back to London. Now, like me, I know many of you are excited that we're in the middle of a summer full of football. England looked good last night, till about the 92nd minute. 
Um, oh. But to be here in England at the heart of football, there's no better place to show you what's next. You'll see in a moment just how far FIFA has come from its debut in 1993. Oh. This is a oh. revolutionary oh. year for FIFA, for the most popular sports game on the planet. This is FIFA 17. Nice. So what did EA Sports in the game? Game. Hmm. Wait a minute, he just do a front flip. Four, three, two, one. Frostbite engine. For you, Will. My name is Alex Hunter. And just like you and every other kid that's grown up kicking about a football, I've always dreamed of playing on the biggest stage for the best tactical minds in the game, alongside the greatest names. Playing in the park with my mates, I've already pictured it. Taking flawless 50-yard passes from Beckham, sending in Messi with the perfect through ball, burying it in the top corner like Rooney. Now, hitting the doggy when I'm fresh. Make that dream my reality. Hitting the doggy when I'm fresh. Yeah. And maybe doggy when I'm fresh. Day, yeah. Step into the center circle of Wembley. Three lions on my chest. This is the start of my journey. I know it won't be easy, but if I can perform on the pitch, make the if right decisions, and take advantage of every opportunity that comes my way. This I believe I can fly. Is the start of my journey, and you're all coming with me. They don't even know what the fuck just happened. <laughs> like, who is this black guy, and why is he up here talking to me right now? I feel weird. Get motivated. I haven't seen a kid coming out of the exit trials generate this much interest in years. I never expected anything like this. Yes! A goal for Alex Hunter on his debut. You're in the big league now. Ah, so he's the main character in like the story? The campaign or whatever? Wow! Check this place out! <laughs> just don't get too carried away. It can disappear just like that. Life doesn't always give you what you want, does it? I'm ready. You'll get your opportunity, Hunter. Just get me out of there. Oh, we might as well pack this season in now. What was he thinking? I want to stay and fight for my place. I won't let you down. Oh. Alex Hunter, an outstanding goal. And welcome to the Premier League. This young man has everything. We're going to make history. Incredible, Hunter! My name is Alex Hunter. You don't know me, but believe me, and I'm a mutant. you soon will. The journey. That's who he was. Oh, so that's who the guy is. So that's amazing. What you just saw that is a brand new experience. Up in FIFA 17 called The Journey. You'll live your Premier League story through the player we just met, Alex Hunter. That is the power of Frostbite, FIFA 17's brand new engine. You'll live in real football worlds, and you'll meet characters full of depth and emotion. Yeah. And maybe nobody shows more emotion than the managers on the sidelines. And as such, for the first time ever, Premier League managers are in the game. I don't know how big of a change that's going to make. For launch today, we'd have three of the most legendary managers in FIFA 17. Check them out. Pep Guardiola, set to join the league. The legendary Arsene Wenger at Arsenal. 
<laughs> Somebody ain't sound like they booed in the background. Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool. They are literally and just booing like a best. motherfucker. These three are the best, second to none. More than 1,500 wins between them with 10 league championships and two... And Yes, that's him. Did, did I say three? I'm not quite sure. Ladies and gentlemen, Jose Mourinho. Mm. So I apologize. I, I, I don't write the scripts here. I don't do the game. Jose, of course, is in the game. And it is a great honor for Jose to join the EA family to be in FIFA 17 as the great manager now, of course, of Manchester United. We've rendered you in the game. I don't know. Uh, we can have a look. Can we get can we get Jose up in the game? But I'm, I'm still upset with you. You st you're still upset. What about you? Are you gonna be yeah. more upset when you come to Anfield this season? We are tw we are 20 of us. You choose three. Just three. You leave us 17 out. I know. I'm, I'm not sorry. happy with that. Yeah. See that clip of the uh, first of all, he looks great. Secondly, I can tell you on behalf of all of us football fans, it's great having the personality and the skill and the talent that is Jose Mourinho back in the Premier League. Right, and right, thirdly, right. I can't wait to bring them to Manfield and show them where real football is played. Having said that, <laughs> having said that, it is great having you in the game. I don't even about FIFA, like players. just soccer fans. Yeah, so they literally, um... Like that, it is a question, do you know? They are like some oh, bloodthirsty yeah, people, man. I can wake up 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. They are literally like bloodthirsty people. Does he spend money on Ultimate Team that you're aware of? Uh, yeah, I control the, the debit cards and yes. <laughs> well, I think we've all seen your contract, so I think there's plenty of Ultimate Team business to be had. So it's going to be great having the managers in there, and it's even more important to have Jose Mourinho, one of the great personalities of football for the last 20 years in all of the things that he's done for this game. We couldn't be more happy to have you in the game. I know your son needs some early code for the game. I think yeah. I can take care of that. So, uh -huh. ladies and gentlemen, please thank Jose. They're going to bullshit and give your son the, head, the heads up. Thank you. Playing favorites. Can't be doing that, man. You're playing favorites. I didn't call him the special one. He just might be. Okay, we've shown you a lot today, but we're not done. It is my pleasure to introduce you to FIFA producer Aaron McCarty. Aaron. Aaron McCarty. Well, thank you, Peter. Thanks. Aaron McCarty. Aaron McCarty. It's great to be here in London. Uh, but for me and for the development team back in Vancouver, it's amazing to finally be able to show you the journey. Now, the best thing about the journey is you're in control of your story off the pitch. But in FIFA, just like football, the most important thing is what happens on the pitch. And that's especially true in gameplay. We're bringing complete innovation to the game this season. Hi. We've got four big transformations that let you own every moment, and we're bringing more control than ever before. Here they are. We've rewritten set pieces to give you creative control over every dead ball. We completely overhauled physical play. We built a new intelligence system so our players are smarter and more active off the ball. And we're giving you new ways to create chances and finish in front of goal. Okay. And those massive transformations are inspired by some of the best young football talent in the game. Let's meet them now through the lens of FIFA 17. All right. Okay, guys, a new season, a fresh start. Today is about winning. In football, this is the most important thing. When we win, we make the fans happy. They are why we train. They are why we are here. So remember what we need to do. Be strong on the ball. Make intelligent runs. Be ruthless in front of goal. And own every moment. The time has come. You are ready. All right. 
Look like they're trying to do the something. Now, go show them why we are the best. Great strength there from Azar. What a run from Royce. Martial, hard and low. That is one from James Rodriguez. Make them happy. Make them sing your name. When you play for the fans, that is when we win. Right, what you say? Nice. Look, so I'm not a big FIFA player, year, but we you know, it looks you nice. With something unexpected, with Unravel you met Yarny, a tiny little character with a huge heart, going on an epic adventure. You also met Martin Salin, a passionate and creative game maker from the Cold War studio that brought Yarny to life. We knew Unravel would steal your heart because it stole ours. Oh. But it also showed us something profound. When we first saw Unravel, we saw a game that we knew deserved the world's attention. It deserved to be played. We also know that there are more out there, more studios like Coldwood, more games like Unravel. Passionate developers telling amazing stories, creating spectacular games. We are committed to working with small developers, finding these great new games, and giving all of you a chance to discover their magic. So today, we are very excited to announce EA Originals. Our EA Originals program is about three things. Firstly, it's about taking first-time experiences that are unique, gorgeous, innovative and memorable, and bringing them to the world. Secondly, it's about supporting small developers and help helping them make the most of their games. Now, we'll seek out a few projects each year for EA Originals and partner with them through the whole process from development to marketing to publishing. And lastly, it's about funding and offering a level of security. Now, making games is hard. It's a hard business. And these small developers have risked themselves to develop a new IP and created games deserved and great games deserve to be played. Now check this out. With EA Originals, we want all the profit from these games to go back into the hands of the developers so they can keep innovating and creating into the future. Now we've already begun with EA Originals, so please welcome to our stage. It wasn't the guy last time that kept like messing up his line. He is here to take you into the beautiful world of our first EA Originals game called Fear. Oh, Fear. Hi, everyone. Wow, it's amazing See? to be here. Joining you all at EA Play here in Los Angeles. It's, uh, well, it's really huge for me, and I'm super excited to be here. So excited, oh my god. I run a small game oh, my geez, my in Gothenburg called Toink. And we are about 20 people brought together by our fascination for new approaches to interactive storytelling. This is really sound like you're going to man. Recently, we've been on a journey with a very special new project. And thanks to Patrick and EA, we're here today to bring you along with us. Let me introduce you to the world of Fae. Fae. At its heart, Fae is a personal narrative about our relationship with nature. It's a game without words a celebration of our longing to be one with the world around us. It's a story that reminds us that everything in this world is connected, living in a delicate balance that is constantly under threat. A sweet, salty, and sour. You awaken as a young cub, Delic. all alone in a dark forest glade, and you have no idea who you are or how you got there. But as you spy from the treetops, you'll soon come to know the extraordinary creatures that live in this forest. And you'll find that they are all connected through their own language. A language of strange and beautiful music. The, every animal, every breathing creature, and even the plants, they all have their own unique song. And by learning them, you can connect to the forest, to understand it, to be part of it. Each song you learn will help you reach new parts of the forest and take you ever closer to discovering the secrets of your own kind. But you are not the only newcomer to the forest. The silent ones corrupt the forest and spread their silence with each step. Oh, it was. Sounds like humans. Then, using stealth and cunning, you will uncover their terrible purpose. 
This is a game full of discovery, conflict, and relationships. Mm. But as we explore the world of Fae, we're not going to hold your hand. Right. The game won't tell you where to go, what to do, or how to think. We will set the stage and invite you into the forest for your own personal experience. An experience that will leave you scared, amazed, and delighted. In the forest, your discovery will be your own. I'm very proud to now show you more about the beautiful world of P. Thank you. Oh, that's a that's not supposed to be a bird, or is that a stingray? A flying stingray? But this looks interesting. Yeah, it looks like an interesting game. I wouldn't mind playing something like this. It looks like it'd actually be pretty fun. <laughs> Wait a minute, he gave. I mean, it looked like he gave orders to that thing, and then he like threw something at him. I don't look too bad. I mean, it looks promising. And here we go, Star Wars, the good stuff. Might be where I really need to turn it down because you know, motherfuckers gonna be it's playing about Star Wars. To here to talk about our Star Wars games. Right now, we have teams across the world creating a wide range of Star Wars games for all types of Star Wars fans. These teams are being led by some of the creative minds who have made some of our favorite games. Nice motive, bio, well, visceral. Now they're channeling their talent and passion. You know, um. I know this is kind of far fetched, but I, 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 I'm kind of out of there. For years to come. Let's break it down. Already today, you can play Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, Star Wars The Old Republic, and of course, Star Wars Battlefront. Uh -huh. Each of these games are live and getting fresh new content all year long. Nice. Next year, you're going to get a new installment of Star Wars Battlefront. Led by DICE, in collaboration with Motive, we're building on the foundation of the first game. We're listening to our players and adding more of what you want, including content from the new films. Nice. Then coming in 2018 is a new action-adventure game. This crowd is kind of dead. <laughs> I mean, I just gotta say that this crowd is kind of dead. This rule. Oh, uh, wasn't those the guys that made Dante's Inferno? Like, you would have thought they would have thought about making another one. They are exploring a different Star Wars era in their own third person action adventure game. We can't wait for you to play these games. I can't wait to play them myself. Here's a special peek behind the curtain at the EA Star Wars games we're working on with Lucasfilm. Thank you, and may the Force be with you. The Star Wars universe is growing day by day with the comics, the films, the games, you name it. And to be a part of that and to work with Lucasfilm has been incredibly exciting. I bet. So what we're really trying to do at EA is cater to different areas of the Star Wars universe and create different game experiences that are tailor-made for those fans. Stockholm, with nice. Star Wars Battlefront, we wanted to really be able to bring people into the world of Star Wars like never before. 
what excites me now is bringing in more characters, more planets, more environments, more eras. And that's why we're super happy to have both Motive Studios and Criterion contributing in a significant way. There's Watch no point all. making something in the Star Wars IP if you're just going to do what's been done before, right? So it's a fantastic opportunity for Motive to really tell the world what we're about. And we're going to bring that to Battlefront, which is, it's crazy. It's incredible. Los Angeles. As a studio, our promise to gamers is ultimately gameplay first. We all demand that the game has these huge wow moments that translates really well to Star Wars universe. We're going to deliver that Star Wars awe like fans have never seen before. That as heroes, we talked a lot about how we grew up as kids with Star Wars, and we collected toys and bring them over to a friend's house. And we'd set up these battles where sometimes it was what we'd seen in the films, and sometimes it was just this random mashup of stuff that we wanted to play from our own imagination. Oh, so it's like an RPG. We bring in characters from all the films, all the TV shows, and even beyond. We even got an RPG mode in there, like, that would be cool. Star Wars is what got me into role-playing games in the first place. That storytelling you did as a kid with your, your Star Wars action figures. It was not in the game that they were talking about, but... Star Wars Hill Republic. The they got an RPG really Star Wars game out there. That's really pretty cool. Part of a Bioware game, and beyond the Old Republic, there are so many stories that we still want to tell. Our goal and is to go visceral. Not to just sort of make a game that is set in the Star Wars universe, but to really tell an authentic Star Wars story, and that's actually a hugely different thing. How do you ground the new and unfamiliar in the familiar? You need the guidance of someone like Doug Chang to show you the way. One of the great joys of working with Amy is she is like a, a film director in many ways because she is telling her story and I'm helping you to realize her world. EA has some really exciting plans in the works for the Star Wars portfolio and what we're doing is bringing in talent from across the industry and letting them loose. We have completely different games on the horizon, and I just hope that every fan walks away going, wow, I never thought they were going to bring my Star Wars fantasy to life. Ooh. Thank you, Jay, and thank you to all our studio teams working on Star Wars games today. So... Here we are. One last game. Let's talk Battlefield 1. Yeah, is this the end? You might be wondering why I'm up here again. <laughs> well, well, you know, the Battlefield outro. started over two decades ago, when DICE was still a small indie studio. We were dreaming about conquering the world and sharing our games with more and more players. Now, I've been involved in each and every part of this series, and it's humbling to serve a Battlefield community today that has grown to more than 60 million players around the world. That is truly incredible, so thank you. It also means that we have a great responsibility to deliver on the promise of Battlefield with every game. We have to take creative risks, to pioneer. So we knew from the start that Battlefield 1 could be no ordinary game. Now let me tell you a quick story about the inception of Battlefield 1. A few years ago, two guys in our studio in at DICE in Stockholm, Stefan Sandberg and Martin Kopperhed, kept telling me that they had the concept for the next battlefield. And each time we met, they showed me more and more ideas from the team. Now, I'll be honest, I was skeptical. I was, like, really skeptical. And I told them, I don't, I don't think we have it yet. Oh. But they kept pushing, they kept coming back. And then one late night in Stockholm, they brought me a very special pitch. An absolutely mind-boggling pitch, unmistakably battlefield, and set in a very unique take on World War I. Right then and there, oh. that's when we knew we had to make this game. So when you stand here introducing a game like Battlefield 1 to tens of millions of dedicated players, you know the risks were worth it. All right. This World War One. This is almost like Medal of Honor. If y'all can remember that game.
that was just a piece of our EA Play trailer, and you'll get to see the full version in just a bit. Uh-huh. First, I want you to know that our team at DICE in Stockholm has huge That's expectations for the General Manager at DICE. We set out to deliver an epic and unforgettable experience for our players. And the result is a dynamic experience where no battle is ever the same. But as a talented as our DICE team is, it is you, the battle community, that powers the team. That is why at World Premiere last month, we revealed Battle 1 alongside our players. We want the community to be part of this every step of the way. And today marks another exciting milestone in the road to Battle 1, our first in-depth look at gameplay. And to reveal that, I'm honored that we have players from our community here to lead the first ever live stream of Battle 1 immediately following the press conference. And our host, Jose Sanchez, is with a few of them right now. Thanks, guys. I am excited because today we are going to see action and Jamie Fox. straight from Battlefield 1 under the command of two solid teams. The players like Jamie Foxx, Zach Efron are going to be on this. Zach game. Efron. Huh. Tonight's event. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Go. I guess he got a new movie coming out about Mike Tyson, so he had to wear that jacket. Minutes, we have the Battlefield Squad's live stream kicking off. 64 players going head to head. 32 v 32 in a best of three matches. Like you, yeah, they got an Iron Mike Tyson movie coming out. It seems like maybe it's called Change, a Champ. It's called Champ, Iron Mike Tyson movie. I don't know. Let me fast forward this a bit. There we go. The Great War gave birth to some of the largest vehicles ever made, and Battle One gives you the chance to control these vehicles. Take control of an airship armored train, or a battleship to dominate the battlefield across air, land, and sea. Air, and land, and sea. Never felt so when if by land, who if by sea. One launches on October 21st, who if I put, who if I feed. Destruction, oh. weather, and a variety of weapons and vehicles that ensure no battle is ever the same. And for those of you who are battlefield insiders, you get an early access to experience this firsthand during the open beta later this summer. All right. In just a few minutes, the Battlefield Squad live stream will begin. But first, let's take another look at Battlefield 1. Thank you. Hey, get the bird out of here. Damn. He shoot his ear off, but then he just bang it too close. The same trailer that they showed two minutes ago. Not really buying what you said with his ear. Okay, here we go. That does sound like Kanye West. Jack the trains, probably carrying all the ammunition. That's not, that looks like it's gonna be action packed. I kind of like that. A World War One setting. That, that's kind of kind of cool. Now they're going back to. Oh, never mind. They're still in London. We're gonna change the world, indeed. It looks absolutely amazing. Battlefield One. So that's our show. We have Battlefield 1 playables right behind me here in, Lo- in London. We've got Titanfall 2. We've got FIFA 17. We've got Madden 17. We here in London are going to have a great time tonight. We're here through midnight. 
It's going to be phenomenal. Andrew, I'm sure you're going to have the same there. Back to you in Los Angeles. Thanks, Peter. All right, well, that's our show. And now the way I see it, I'm the only thing standing between you and an hour of Battlefield 1 gameplay. So let's keep this quick. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you to all of you here in Los Angeles. And, of course, thank you to everyone in London as well. We're just getting started here at EA Play, so stay with us. There's a lot more to come. Oh, oh. And now it's time to play. Thank you. Ooh, uh, outro. People are going to have to hurry up back to the stations. Chill series, but nevertheless, man, it feels like the game that I'm looking forward to most out of everything there. Literally, Titanfall 2. I mean, even though they're bringing it to PS4 and uh, and also PC, I'm kind of like, eh. it's interesting to see what they did, but for whatever reason, I feel like that game is gonna. I don't know, I just feel bad about it for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it's just jitters, but nevertheless, man. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video. I'll see you guys for the remainder of the last couple of uh, E3 press conferences.